Okay, Fremantle Dockers go down to the Giants by nine points. Um, an actual stirring effort from the boys. I thought they played really competitively over the four quarters. Um, and as Duck says many a time, the Fremantle Dockers have to beat themselves sometimes in order to beat the opposition. And unfortunately today we couldn't get our, ourselves out the way of um, a number of cat tens. And um, to be fair, probably the bottom four or five players that really uh, had mares of a game today, um, which cost the team ultimately. And certainly that last 50 metre penalty by, um, by Banners wasn't ideal, but not the reason solely why we lost, but certainly um, collectively when the game's that close, you just got to take those moments. Um, so interesting thing is if you look at the stats, we won the clearances plus one. Inside 50s, I think we won plus four. Um, but the uncontested possessions, negative um, 38. Um, so the Giants were able to move the ball how they wanted to move the ball. And in patches, particularly in the first quarter, when we allowed them to um, to get the game on their terms, I thought it was going to take a lot for us to actually get the game on back on our terms. And we worked our way back. And it, you know, credit to the boys for for kicking um, relatively accurately, which was great. Um, but you know, the Giants end up kicking ten goals five from sixty one intercepts. And you know, if you turn the ball over, and and for us it was just cat ten esque stuff that dumb stuff within the the forward 50 where we would turn the ball over or or the option wasn't necessarily to be patient and hit up a target and then they would just slingshot the other way and unfortunately we were done in a couple of players for the gws just have to be shouted out brent daniels three goals one 11 score involvements and 13 tackles i mean are you kidding dude we might have missed the um the, the j-lo um team meeting on him um not sure who was falling asleep but um yeah, he, he might want to put some time into him. I thought Tommy Green, 23 contested possessions, outstanding overall for his 40 possession plus game, 13 clearances, I mean, please. Um, and of course, Jesse Hogan kicking six goals and unfortunately just cooked Cox. Cox couldn't go with him. Um, tried to switch with drapes at times and he was just too mobile. And that's the reason towards the end when you know he gave his opposition player far too much um, time and space. But um, you know, Hogan was always good for leading up at the ball. So, you know, you can't really nail Cox for, for not going all the way there, but um, he was just too good. Um, Brayshaw's 41 disposals, 21 contested, nine clearance game. I mean, please, he couldn't do any more to put this team on his shoulders and should be shouted out for a macho man-esque performance. And he'll get the shout out tomorrow, no doubt. Three goals to Freddie, two goals to Sturt, two goals to Sarong, two goals to Voss. And Jai kick one goal too. Yeah, my bad. Um, the couple of crucial misses by Jai, but the running goal was elite, so that was great. Um, yeah, so just mindful, ball in hand. A couple of players really struggled when the heat was on. I thought um, Sharpie could have done a lot better with ball in hand. I thought a couple of his disposals were bog average, to be fair. Um, but try to work his way back in, which was important. Um, I thought Banners in particular, he just couldn't get into the game today. And, and probably a couple of weeks now, he's had below average games. And for Banners, you know, when he is fighting to be in the 22, it really is important that he plays as, as close to his best as he can. And it's noticeable when he doesn't. So that's what happened today. Um, I really thought we missed the mark in terms of making the change. I'm 100% steadfast, a believer in JLo, and I believe that he's the coach for the team, blah, blah, blah. But um, I thought we missed the mark today in, in pulling the trigger on the sub, you know, with about five, six minutes to go in the third quarter, you could see that we needed to make the change and the momentum was swinging and we left it far too late. I think like by the time we saw um, O'Driscoll, who had a fantastic impact for a short period of time, I think he came on on, on TV, I think it's about 16 minutes to go in the fourth quarter um, when he really needed to be coming on sooner. And I didn't think Fife was the man to come off, but you know, I'm, I'm not a tactical dude. I just, I, I'm not sure why Fife, he came off. I thought it should have been Banners hands down. I mean, it was clear as day, it should have been him. Um, but it, it is what it is. Um, and that's why the uneducated like myself have no idea what's going on and make stupid statements. And that's where we're at. So. Um, I'm so proud of the lads for putting up a fight, but um, so close, another heartbreaking loss, but just goes to show anywhere, anytime this team can match it with a full strength side in, in GWS. If we have Tracy, if we have Moose, if we have Walters, gee whiz, it looks like a different side. So it'll be interesting to see what happens next week. I thought Reedy was great. I thought he, he was very serviceable, crafty knocks. Um, 
tapered a little bit in that fourth quarter and even, you know, probably a, a selection whether to, to bring him off. Um, I don't know, but um, I thought he had a great game. So well done to Reedy on his debut. Well done. And um, we really need some results to go our way, but so close. Anyway, go Frio. Let's get around it.